Hey YouTube, this is Ryan making another vid. If you like my content, please consider hitting the like button. Also, please consider subscribing, as it is very much appreciated. This is a EDC rotation update of my current EDC rotation, and it is also basically my current collection of my pocket knives. I don't really have a pocket knife collection as such I um I I don't collect pocket knives per se I have my rotation which I have this is the complete rotation in front of you here now and I don't really buy pocket knives to add to the collection that I'm not going to have in my rotation. I don't buy pocket knives that I'm just going to have to add into the collection and then not going to have them in my rotation. I, I decided a little while ago, like 12 months ago or a little bit over 12 months ago, that I would basically focus my rotation on M390 blade steel. And I love the flipper deployment method. If you notice on my wrist here, I broke my scaphoid, which is a little bone in the wrist in a car accident several years ago. Um, Thumb opening knives this way, the rotation that way, isn't comfortable for me. Um, so, flipping, flipping knives is my preferred method. So, I only carry pocket knives that are flipper deployment. And I went to M390 because as far as I'm concerned, and this is only my opinion, but as far as I'm concerned, M390 and its analogs, 204P and 20CV is the best for me pocket knife steel available on the market at the moment. It gives the best edge retention if it's with, delivered within bowler's HRC of 60 to 62 HRC. And if, you, if, if manufacturers, sorry for knocking the camera then, um, if, if it's delivered within the manufacturer's recommended HRC range of 60 to 62, and given a little bit of care during that heat treat, a bit of cryo, and if they do a little bit of hand grinding and whatnot, um, like Riat does, and several other manufacturers at the moment, you will get outstanding edge retention, and Riat get, gets that excellent edge retention numbers shown all the time. So basically what manufacturers have to do these days is deliver M390 at between HRC of 60 to 62 and they'll find that they'll be getting excellent performance out of the M390. Anyway, let's go on to showing you what I've got. I've basically got 28 M390s or the analogs of 204P or 20CVs. I do have four here that aren't in that. I do carry a, a multi tool. My fer preferred one is the Leatherman Wingman. I've carried this for several years now, and it is, while it is not the best um, multi tool, it serves my needs and has the 
basic minimum of tools and I like it. it does everything I need and it sits in my left pocket and I don't I can't get in trouble for carrying it in Queensland or Australia you're not allowed to carry these things I'm a stay-at-home dad so I carry these while I'm at home so I can't get in trouble for doing that so this is my at home carry so that's what that's this is what I carry but when I go out that's why I have this a Swiss army knife I can carry this out at as a, as per the legislation um this is my out and about knife Swiss army knife so that's why I have that My other, this is my disposable knife. It's my only budget knife that I have in my my rotation. It's the Real Steel 801 Megalodon. And only because I love the Megalodon range. I bought this one. This is, was my first high-end knife. So I loved it so much. I bought several of them. Basically, I bought all of them except for the N690 version, which I don't see the point because I've got the higher end versions. Well, anyway, I bought the the 14C28 N version, and it's my disposable knife. If I didn't want to, if I want to cut something objectionable. This is the knife I'll use. And it it's it's a perfectly acceptable budget knife. And if I was to choose the what I consider the best budget knife, this is the one I choose every time. It has everything that I want in a budget knife. As you can see, really good flipping action. Wiggles shut. Good lock up. Everything I want in a budget knife and when I bought it it cost me 70 bucks so really good value for money top little budget knife or not a little it's um yeah nearly four inch blade fits my hands really well and I should have mentioned at the beginning of this video this is going to be a like a 20 minute video so settle down in for a long one this is the only high-end knife that doesn't fit in the M390 category. And this is the S571. It's a limited run and it's made in Elmac steel. I included it in it because it's just so damn good. Um, it's on roller bearings. Makes it really smooth and I really like it. It's probably one of the best of the of the of the knives that real steel makes it was its flag their flagship knives and i can see why they just really did really did a a, a champion job of making showing what they can do with it it just lacks a little bit of bling for me. I like um, a little bit of flash to my pocket knives. Just maybe they could have put a little, like a bit of blue anno on it. And um, just made it, the, the grey is a little bit austere. And um, yeah, but other than that, flips really well, very smooth and, the roller bearings are really good, good lock up. Everything's really nice about it. And it's in Elmac steel, which is a good steel. It's just um, a little bit slightly stepped down from M390, but certainly worthy addition. And that's why I included in this rotation. So now on to my M390s. Starting down here. My ZTs, 
920, Les George, designed Beast, Beast with Bling. I love it. I didn't like it at first, but um, yeah, it's um, it's a chunky, big flips really well. Very nice. Filled all the holes up. Just ask Kai USA to send you me out. Um, you'll notice with all of them, I have a lot of things that I want on my EDC knives. I want a lanyard. I always like the lanyards. I want jimping on my flipper tabs. Um, they have to flip really well. Um, I like a little bit of external texturing. They have to fit my hands really well as far as that goes. I don't like a smaller knife. Um, yeah, all these knives pretty well fit the parameters perfectly so that's that's I've I've, I've basically set out a, a set of parameters that I wanted and all these knives comply with it so yeah th that's that's what I've done so that's the 920 zero tolerance ZT470 this was a surprise I um I saw it and I really liked the design Sinkovich design. It's a beautiful little gentleman's knife. Flips really well. Just on the edge of being too small, but fits me really well. Um, again, typical ZT. Flips really well. The KVT bearing system works really well. It's not ceramic, but it, it works great. Just wish they'd maybe put panels on the other side, but that doesn't really worry me too much. Everything's done really well. Nice texturing on the outside, slight, slight orange peel and that. Just a nice little knife. You can barely notice it's in your pocket. Beautiful little knife, actually. As you said, as I said, I um I, I tend to fill all the holes. The only one I didn't do is in the next one. 456 CT. It's a solid little knife, little chubby little knife. Another Sinkovich design. It's got that s subtle milling on the outside. I saw this and it, it um, yeah, it, it suits me really well. Fits my hand. It's a bit heavy, but you certainly know it's in your pocket. But yeah, I'm, I I don't like these worn cliffs that much. But this one, yeah, it's certainly certainly worthy of being in the rotation. The one, the few ones that I have, I really enjoy. I like this one. Yeah, the only I didn't get the um. I didn't get the the screws to fit in there, and I put a I got the this is from the five fifty zero tolerance. It's a deep pocket carry, so yeah, it's it's a it's a good fit because they share share the same pattern bolt pattern. So yeah, five six two CF Hindra's design. I actually prefer this one to the hinderers. The only thing they didn't do is put a lanyard hole in, which I dislike. Um, I wish they'd followed the hinderer design there. They, um, thankfully, they didn't put the jimping on the landing zone there. Then, for some reason, they didn't follow the hinderer design and put jimping on the on the flipper tab, which I prefer. So I got. A member from ABF to do that for me. Um, added anode hardware. Really nice knife, other than the fact that it doesn't have a lanyard and this is only a makeshift. I would carry it more, 
It's just, um, yeah, it doesn't, the, that lanyard is not, is not, not the, my preferred way of doing things. It is a little bit hit and miss with it. So, yeah, it's not my preferred ZT. Out of all of the ZTs, my Rexford 804 CF, that's my favourite. It's beautiful. Just wish they hadn't hadn't um, discontinued it. Fantastic ZT model. It's um, it's everything that I think ZT does, and they did it so well. As again, I filled those holes up. I would just wish they'd put a little panel in there. It's where the pocket clip goes. They should have just put a little CF panel in there and put a couple of screws in it just to fill it up, finish it off. But um, yeah, that's that's my Rexford Rexford design eight hundred four CF. Nice texturing. That CF's really well done. I don't like the um. Don't like the the DLC on that. Um, it shows snail trails up really easy, but you just you're constantly using Windex to get it off. But anyway, if I keep rambling on, and this is going to be like a forty minute video. Onto my real steels S three. Um, disappointed in this one, sluggish. Wasn't nothing like the G3. Um, yeah, again, no lanyard. I had to put it on the back space, uh, back, back standoff. I don't like that. Um, it goes back onto the blade, so you end up chewing out your lanyards. Sluggish flipping action. Had the potential to be a really nice knife. Again, don't carry it that often, but yeah, I I wanted to love it, but I just didn't. It it it's good, but it's not excellent. And the biggest disappoint, disappointment out of all of them was the Harrier. Again, really wanted to love this one, the Real Steel Harrier. A lot of innovation in it. Um, the double detent with the caged um, sealed bearing system in it. Um, it develops blade play with with it. This wasn't lock tight and you have to lock tight it up and it just doesn't work properly as far as I'm concerned. You tighten it up and then lock tight it and it doesn't drop shut there so um yeah and as you can see it fails now because i've tightened it up so that it doesn't doesn't do it properly so it it's just it's just not as i said it's it's a very big disappointment for me for a 300 hundred dollar pocket knife i was um yeah bitterly disappointed with it overall I um actually should have sent it back but the bloke I bought it off has shut his shop and I um yeah I just don't want to deal with with it but anyway lessons learned from it so um actually after this one I haven't bought any more real steels so yeah I'm um yeah, a little bit burned with this one so yeah. Anyway, onto them. Had some really good experiences with these two, so that's that's Megalodon Eclipse. Another. I I love the Megalodon lines. Um, it, they just so good pocket knives. This one's really good. This has got the ceramic bearings. Perfect. 
beautiful action, smooth, drop shot, works really well. Um, the panel, CF panel's really nice. Um, a lot of people complain that they didn't do it on both sides, but um, yeah, it doesn't bother me that much. But again, the action is spectacular on it. It's as about 95, 96% of the original Megalodon Titan. First high-end pocket knife I bought and I fell in love with this one. I haven't taken it apart. Um, I don't know whether it's got the roller bearings in it or it had ceramic bearings in it. Either way, it keeps up with the best of the best as far as action goes. I've heard it being compared to Shirogorov's as far as action goes. And that's when they've had, um, that's with Shirogorov owners put them up against, had them compared side by side. So that's a testament to the action of these guys. Um, yeah, it's, they are among the best. And these, when I bought this, this cost me $200 Australian. So if it can keep up with a thousand dollar pocket, a thousand dollar knife, I'm really happy with that. So, yeah, um, it it just fires with authority every time, and wiggles shut. The Shiro's probably glide shut a little bit better, but yeah, these ones fire every bit as good. Keeps up with the best, I know it keeps up easily with, with the best reacts I've got anyway, so that's their double or triple the price of them anyway. Kaiser, Mjolnir, the only Kaiser I've got, but Kaiser doesn't make many M390s, so, and I won this one, so has holds a special place for me. Fires really well, fits my hand quite well. I like it, yeah, solid offering from Kaiser. Now, it gets into the ones I have the most of, my Wii's. 809 Practic, my little, this would be the one I'd use as a cardboard cutter. Beautiful little knife, glad I got it. This is, um, yeah, the G10. Has all the ceramic bearings. Again, they're a lot cheaper than the other ones. They, they retailed about $200, $190 to $220. So, but they keep going out of stock and then occasionally they bring them back in. So, but I, I see they're, they're out of stock again. So I don't think you'll... I don't know if they'll bring them back again, but I'm glad I got mine. 819 Dracon. This was, I think, um, yes, this was my, no, second of the integrals I bought. Absolutely love this knife. It's a um, fantastic integral. We does a really nice integral. They, um, for the money you pay for them, because the Integral's a hard build, um, just with the external milling and the way it fires, everything about it, it's just a classy knife. You know, it looks nice, it's beautiful, actually, and with everything they've done about it, and yeah, it, it's, it's a beautiful little knife. Um, yeah, fires really well. Yeah, just an, a, a nice knife. It's one of my going out knives, so yeah. Eight oh four CF purple, 
my missus picked this one. Um, yeah, she thought it was cute. So I would, I would normally, I, you'd probably notice I, I like blue, but um, she picked the purple. I'm glad she did. Um, yeah, mixed it up a little bit. I really like this knife too. Again, it um, you can barely know know it's in your pocket. So um, I like carrying it. It's um, it's a nice nice little knife to be in your pocket. Probably one of my favourite Wii's actually, the A thirty seven. Really, really interesting design. Um, completely different. Um, yeah, just with the with the way they with this two piece design. Just got it back. I bent the pocket clip on it, so the pocket clips looks all brand new, which it is because they replace the pocket clip on it but yeah um, really nice knife big lots of options very very nice and light um that's that's the big selling point on this one even though it's got a four inch blade it weighs four ounces so it hits that perfect ratio of one ounce per inch blade so yeah again carries in the pocket really well so yeah I love it probably one of my favorite wees eight oh one Minotaur one of the first ones that I actually got to review and um I liked it so much I bought it because um yeah it's um it's a beautiful knife we did a really good job of it. And this is, again, one of the few of the Warncliffe blades that I have. And as I said, I only have a few of the Warncliffe's, but the ones I do have, I um, I really enjoy. So, yeah, if, if I've got a Warncliffe, you know I enjoy it. So, yeah, yeah, this one's... um. It its action's a little bit sluggish, but yeah, it's just so smooth and yeah, very well, very refined pocket knife, all radius sized up here and everything. Everything about it just says classy. So yeah, it's a beautiful pocket knife. This is the um, nine oh three Bishop. Had high, very high hopes for this. It um, it pretty well delivered. The action's a little bit sluggish. There was a bit of a story with it. I won't really go into it. I was hoping to get it get a tuned one from Wii. They um, they didn't do it. But anyway, um, it has worn in a bit. It still is sluggish, but um, it's getting better. I'll say that it um yeah it's it's not too bad now but you can file it easily and but other than that yeah it's a, still a very nice pocket knife everything about it is designed to be easily EDC'd it's just, and it's a handsome piece. Just wish the action was a little bit snappier. That's the only thing. But again, very classy looking pocket knife. And this one, yeah, the jigs. Out of all the Wii's, I'd say this is probably the best firing pocket knife I have out of the Wii's. And I would even go to say it's probably the best firing pocket knife I almost own. And that's putting it up against my Megalodon. Um, it's 
amazing action. It's so well dialed in. It's snappy. Drop shot. Glassy smooth. They um, really, really did a job on it. Perfectly dialed in. Fantastic. And as soon as I um as soon as I felt it, I knew I had to have it. I'm just glad they put that front choil there, otherwise it wouldn't have fit my hand. It is a bit rough on the pocket uh, on the pocket lips because of this here. It chews your pocket clip pocket lips up really badly. But um I can live with that just because of that action. Um it keeps up with, yeah, seven hundred dollar pocket knives easily, and I'd put that pretty well put that up against just about any pocket knife on the market as far as action goes. Um, yeah, it's it's spectacular. It's it it I I just can't speak highly enough about its action. It's su surprisingly good. It's fantastic, actually, um, and that's why I bought it. But, and it's such a beasty little knife, too. It's very solid, and, yeah, I'm, I'm just so glad I bought it. But, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a very nice little, little knife. I just wish they had included those two little, two little protrusions there because they are very rough on your pocket lips. Couple of integrals now. Seven hundred two B integral. I think that was the first integral I bought off Wee. Very nice, very very nice. Stiff detent, so sometimes you do misfire it because your your finger slips off the tab despite its jimping. But yeah, um. We does a very good integral um, for the price. You tend to pay a couple, couple of hundred dollars less for an integral by We. So, yeah, really nice. And then the last one, the Synergy 2 integral. Again, I love and loathe this one. Um, I really wanted to like it a lot. Um, I do like it a lot. It um, has a lot to like. It just, um, again, with the... Um, they put milling on the inside here and going in and out of the pocket, it um, it's really really rough on your pocket lips, so it yeah it rips up your pocket lips really well, and they put jimping on the landing zone, so every time you fire it, your fingers do it, and that's what Hindra does too, which it, it's it's just silly. I don't understand why they do it. Um, it just makes firing it uncomfortable. And this thing about wearing gloves while you, while I live in Australia, it's not cold all the time, so I'm not wearing gloves. I don't think I've, I've worn gloves in ever. So anyway, they did it and it just diminishes my, my love of the knife. So anyway, that's what they did. I'll leave my reats to last. <sighs> Two year knife, Kingsman. Really nice, classy pocket knife. I really like this one. Really nice. Lots to like about it. Um, don't carry it as much as I should. Um, I do rotate through a fair few through it so 
because I've got 28 of them, um, they tend to only get a couple of days each. So by the time you've rotated through, they, um, yeah, they only get a couple of days each. So, you know, like you, you, you 40 or 50 days, you know, in, you know, two months and you, it takes you two months to get through, through it. So, yeah, the, I really like this one. It's just, um, for some reason, the way the, the geometry they've set up with the blade just doesn't cut as well as it should. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a bit thick and it just for the tasks I use it for, it just didn't cut as well as I'd liked. And the pocket clip was is not very deep carry, so a lot of the pocket not pocket a part of a fair bit of it sticks out of the pocket. So yeah, it's it's not very discreet carry. The other two you knife is the shuriken. It's a nice little knife, um, colourful, blurple I got, you know, a blue and purple, mottled, um, textured CF, fires really well, if you can get it to wiggle, um, yeah, just really nice, um, had them tested, they had run on these at 63 Rockwell, so, um, I haven't done any cutting tests with it, but um, if they all tested at 63 Rockwell, they should hold their edge really well. So I saw saw several uh, saw them. Tony True Talon did had them tested, and yeah, the the test one had yeah came out at 63 Rockwell. So yeah, nice little pocket knife and. It was cheap. It was like a hundred, uh, hundred and ninety dollars. I think. I think I bought that one at. So yeah.